Hello again, good morning, noon and evening to any of our listeners. Welcome to the fourth episode of Children of the Corn, where we discuss different sides to the story of my grandfather, Hendrik Cornelius. My name is Hildebrand. And I am Marie. Today we are happy to welcome a very special guest. This person actually inspired us to create this podcast by writing an article for the Groninger Gazette. Joan, welcome to our podcast. Hey Marie, it's so good to see you again. And nice to meet you as well, Hildebrand. Good to see you as well. Do you want to start out by telling us how you started writing about Cornelius? Yeah, sure. And also, sorry if my voice is a bit weird because I caught a cold, so it's a bit low. Um, but basically, I just needed to write an article for the Gazette. And I found this article on the Groninger Archive website about him. And I thought I could write about that. So I did that. And then I actually went down to the archives and I found a lot of stuff there. It was really cool. Anything interesting you found out there? Yeah, so one of the most interesting things I found that I haven't published anywhere is that Cornelius actually used to work at the Groninger Gazette when he was young. And um, I actually found a lot of his old articles in our office. And it was just really weird to see how normal they are because it was before he became um, a war hero or criminal. And he just talked about normal things like I write about, like the um, supermarket that opened up and stuff like that. So that was really cool. That's really interesting. It's interesting to like hear about something written in his own voice, especially before all the drama happened. That's exactly how I felt about it as well. Um, it just makes him feel like more human in a way, I guess. And maybe it was good, maybe it was evil, but before all of that, he was just a person writing about basically everyday life. That's true. About that, you recently wrote an article about Hendrik stealing food stamps during the war. Can you tell us a bit about how you wrote it? Yeah, so when I was writing the article, uh, my goal was kind of to give readers information on the matter in order to let them form their own opinions about it. And I tried to stay away from my own opinion, but I don't really think um, I could if I tried to. Because, of course, stealing food stamps is not the wisest thing he could have done, um, but he must have had a good reason. He might have considered it as a necessary uh, means to ensure survival and well-being for himself and for those dependent on him. And he likely saw his action as a way to provide for his community and to protect them from uh, ravages of hunger, even if it meant resorting to more mo morally ambitious um, means. But he did steal food from other people, and most likely those people needed it, ch needed it just as much as he did. How can that be good? He did, but he chose where to steal from carefully, and he made sure that he hit the most in need as little as possible. Um, and if he really only cared about himself, why take time and effort to do that? I mean, I'm not saying stealing can be justified at all, but we simply don't have all the information we need in order to decide whether he, not he was good or bad. That's true, of course. I know your articles have caused quite a lot of renewed interest in my grandfather, and that it also caused quite a lot of conflict. How do you feel about that? I don't know, it's actually really weird. Like, there's been a lot of discussion ever since I published the first article, and some of it is really beautiful, like this podcast, and it's just um, good to hear that. But there are also more extreme protests, like the activists who try to uh, tear down the statue of Cornelius that is at the Essefield Cemetery. Um, and I visited a few days ago, and someone vandalized it with graffiti. And there were also some flowers there, so you could really see the different perspectives. And I'm not really sure how to think about how to feel about it. Um, and I feel kind of guilty in a way, like um, I was the only one to question his morality at first, and now everyone's doing it. Isn't that a good thing? Maybe. Maybe, but then again, I don't really know anything more than anyone else, so who am I to question it? Cornelius, he can't really speak anymore, so we'll never really know what happened. I don't think you should blame yourself for the statue being vandalized. You just brought up the conversation, but you can't be held responsible for how people will react to it. Besides, people always put flowers there. You spread love as well. I also think it's just good to talk about these kind of things. Without your article... I would have never found out about my own family's fa family's past, and me and Hildebrand would have never started this podcast. This is our history, and it shouldn't be forgotten. Wouldn't it be better if it were, maybe? What good is causing conflict even today? I mean, don't we have enough to worry about already? I don't think we can ever really forget. If I've learned anything from making this podcast, it's that my grandfather was impacted a lot of uh, that he has impacted a lot of people, for better or worse. And that impact is still around. Hell, my, my last name is Cornelius. We're the children of the corn. 
(laughs) (laughs) Well, Cornelius can't speak anymore, sure. But we can. And we're the ones that need to live with our history. So let's talk about it. Cornelius won't care about graffiti on a statue. Nor do the flowers do anything for him. Maybe the flowers are for us. Death made a hero out of him to some, a villain to others. Does it even matter who is right? Maybe no one is. Maybe everyone is. I think that's a good question f- for a wrap-up. Joan, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. It was good to talk to you both. And to any of our listeners, thank you for listening. We'll be back next week with another episode. And what's more, you can actually attend this one live on socials, etc. And you can contact us through the regular cesspool of social media.